Our purpose of coming is to renew our strength. Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to the month of soaring beyond and above limitation in Jesus' name. We said in January that this year will be the best year you ever lived in your life. And we are getting near the end of the year. The third quarter is finishing this month. And you need to be getting ready, examining from January until this time. And now, for this month, somebody help me shout, soaring above limitation. That's a theme for the third weekend revival this month and it's an addition a continuation of what we had said earlier as you believe it will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus name for me I, I, I said for me I will soar above and beyond limitation and as the prophecy came out at the beginning of the year, this year will be, I thought you'll say it now, the best year I ever lived in Jesus' name. Addition in your life. Multiplication in your life. But you must make sure you attend these programs that are designed to lift you up. This month, you will not be absent. I say amen for you in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this time. I was glad when he said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. The day of worship is a day of joy, a day of happiness, a day of progress, a day of listening to you, a day of enlightenment. We're asking, oh Lord, today that this day will be a wonder filled day in every life in Jesus' name. Feel our lives with wonder, feel our lives with power. And let the joy of the Lord be our strength in Jesus' name. Open our ears to hear, our eyes to see, our hearts to receive, that this will be the beginning of great prophetical utterances in every life in Jesus' name. But thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're turning to Osea chapter 12. Osea chapter 12. And I'm reading to you from verse 13. Osea chapter 12, verse 13. And by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. I read that verse to you. For you to understand the ministry of the prophet. 
many people have a limited understanding of the lim of the ministry of the prophet they think a prophet is somebody who sees vision who tells you what you ate yesterday who tells you what may happen tomorrow they have a limited knowledge a limited understanding a limited comprehension a limited enlightenment a limited belief in the ministry of the prophet there are many people that also believe that all the prophets lived in the old testament under the old covenant and they don't even know what those prophets were made to do and what they were made to reveal they think in the new testament the people who say they are prophets they are the people who will say thus says the lord and then something that had never been revealed in the bible they will say and what they say like the end of the year for some people is the time they're expecting prophets to come out and prophets to predict and prophets to tell us what's going to happen this year and then they're going to talk about the nation about the families about the communities some people seek that is the prophet but now the word of god is telling us look at that verse 13 again osea chapter 12 verse 13 by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet he was preserved he's telling us that as he brings us out of captivity he does that by prophet he brings us out of sin he does that by prophet he brings us out of satanic imprisonment he does that by a prophet he brings us out of trouble out of trial out of sickness out of anything that holds us in captivity he does that by prophet by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt not only that to be preserved preserved in salvation preserved in the goodness of god preserved in the power of god preserved in fearlessness to fo to follow and to go through life with boldness and courage he preserves his people by the ministry of the prophet look at that again and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet he was preserved and so you understand the ministry of the prophet that's what i'm talking about today the profitable ministry of faithful prophets the profitable ministry of faithful prophets already you have learned that faithful prophets bring the people of god out of captivity the captivity of sin the captivity of sickness the captivity of evil spirit the captivity in any area of life is satanic affliction he brings his people out not only that after they are brought out he preserves them he preserves their lives he preserves their destiny he, pre he preserves the promises he has given them he preserves every intention every goal every ideal and every prospect that he had ordained for them by the ministry of the prophet he preserves them in malachi chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 4 malachi chapter 4 reading from verse 4 remember that ye the law of moses my servant which i commanded unto him in Horeb, for all israel with the statutes and the judgments look at this one behold i will send you elijah the prophet i will send you it's not talking about the elijah that already went to heaven in the old testament under the old covenant he said i'm going to send somebody and he's going to be like the prophet elijah before the coming of the great and the dreadful and the dreadful day he shall turn 
this is the prophet now we're already going is the last page of the old testament and this is talking of what will happen in the new testament in that new testament i will send to you a prophet before the dreadful day of the lord the dreadful day of the lord is the day of vengeance it's the time of the great tribulation and so from the beginning of the new testament until the coming of christ this will be the ministry of the prophet he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children that's prophet and the heart of the children to their fathers that's the prophet lest i come and smite the earth with a curse and the beginning of that fulfillment you look at luke chapter one luke chapter one and i'm reading from verse 13 luke chapter one we're reading from verse 13 in luke chapter 1 verse 13 it says but the angel said unto him fear not zacharias for thy prayer is heard your prayer is heard and the wife elizabeth shall bear thee a son and thou shalt call his name everybody tell me the name john i remember the lord said i will send you a prophet like elijah it will turn the hearts of the children to their fathers that's the ministry of the prophet now and the hearts of the fathers to the children that's the ministry of the prophet now and he tells us about john verse 14 and thou shalt have joy and gladness when that prophet comes like elijah he'll give you joy in the nation he'll give you gladness in the nation and many shall rejoice at his birth for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost the prophet in the New Testament filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb and many of the children shall, of Israel shall return to the Lord their God that's the prophet he promised he will send and when he comes he will turn the hearts of the children unto their fathers and in particular he will turn the hearts of the children to the heavenly father God and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord when that prophet comes the prophet in the new covenant the prophet in the new testament it will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord look at verse 76 verse 76 and thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest john the baptist the father in the spirit the father filled with the holy ghost said thou shall be called the prophet of the highest for thou shalt go before the face of the lord to prepare his ways the prophet in the new covenant will go before the Lord, will live before the Lord, will minister before the Lord, will minister in the power of the Holy Ghost, and he will prepare the way of the Lord. Look at the prophet, look at what he will do. Verse 77, to give the knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. That's the prophet of the new covenant. The prophet of the New Testament, he prepares the minds of the people. He turns them away from sin. He turns them to the Lord and he gives them the knowledge of salvation for the remission of their sins, for the removal and for the cleansing of their sin through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high has visited us 
when a prophet comes there's a visitation of the lord he visits his people and when he visits his people verse 79 to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace that's what the prophet comes to do he comes to guide us he comes to lead us he comes to enlighten us he comes to direct us in the way of peace in short he links us and connects us with the prince of peace that's the prophet he looks at jesus the prince of peace the final word from the father and the prophet comes and he points to christ the prince of peace and he connects us with christ the prince of peace we're looking at the profitable ministry of faithful prophets three things we're looking at number one the preservation of people through the faithful prophets if a prophet rises up and is faithful faithful to god faithful to his calling faithful to the word faithful to the bible faithful to his own conscience and faithful to the people he's ministering to the faithful prophets deserve to preserve the people of god they preserve us in the salvation of god they preserve us in sound doctrine they preserve us in the word of the gospel they preserve us in everything the lord has made available that will be possessors of point number one the preservation of people through the faithful prophets point number two the peril of perversion by the false prophets when a prophet comes and is false and is unfaithful and is not keeping to the goal and to the ideal and the calling of god upon the life of the prophet it becomes false is diverted is deceitful he goes aside and eventually because of the perversion of that false prophet there's peril there's danger point number two the peril of perversion by false by the false prophets point number three the perfection of prophecy by the final prophet that prophet now with a capital p referring to the lord jesus christ the son of god the final prophet he comes to give us the perfection and the completeness and the sufficiency of the prophecy that comes from god he is the final word he is the final message from the almighty god is higher above any other prophet that ever lived and his word is final and we have the perfection of prophecy by the final prophet let's come back to number one the preservation of people through the faithful prophets let me read again to you from Hosea chapter 12 verse 13 Hosea chapter 12 I'm reading here from verse 13 and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved that's referring primarily to Moses and then the preservation to Moses and the rest of the faithful prophets in the old covenant we're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 34 Deuteronomy chapter 34 we're reading from verse 10 Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 10 and there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses a prophet like unto Moses the Lord referred to him as a prophet the Old Testament refers to him as a prophet 
under the old covenant is referred to as a prophet and it says in the old covenant there was no prophet to be compared with Moses and there arose not a prophet since in Israel unto like unto Moses whom the Lord knew face to face the Lord knew him face to face a prophet indeed and all the in all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land and in all that mighty hand that's the description of a prophet mighty signs and wonders fearlessness boldness to declare the word of God unto anyone even to the king a king like Pharaoh boldness and fearlessness to minister to the children of Israel and to show them this is the way what he in it and then to support his word with wonders and signs to support his message with miracles and a prophet that knew God face to face in verse 12 and in all that mighty hand and in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel look at Exodus chapter 4 where does the prophet get his message how does the message come to the prophet it tells us the words a prophet speaks faithful prophet is the very word of God the very might of God the very will of God pointing to us the way of the Lord Exodus chapter 4 verse 12 in Exodus chapter 4 verse 12 now therefore go and I will be with thy mouth that's a prophet a faithful prophet the Lord is with the mouth nothing unclean nothing strange nothing false comes into his mouth or comes from his mouth I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say that's a faithful prophet a faithful prophet is not somebody just thinking out something you know I want to say something I want to encourage the people. I want to settle the people. Many people have their unsettled lives, unsettled families, and their situation in our land demands that I say something. And then the people come to him and they say, What do you say? The nation is passing through this and that. Say something that we can tell the people and the people will feel encouraged not not like that here it says the almighty god said i will teach thee what thou shalt say look at verse 15 and thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth the almighty god actually puts words in the mouth of the prophet and i will be with thy mouth and with his mouth referring to aaron i will teach you and will teach you and will teach you what ye shall do i'll teach you what you will say i'll teach you what you will do a prophet of the lord who is a faithful prophet is not walking by trial and error it's not you know walking in a blindfolded it's not just here and there falling into pits and uh, then it comes out and it says that will not work let me try this that will not work let me try this i will teach you what thou shalt do a prophet is one taught of the lord a prophet is one trained of the lord to say and to do what he says and what he does we're looking at exodus chapter 32 exodus chapter 32 i'm reading from verse 7 and the lord said unto moses go get thee down for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of egypt have corrupted themselves they have turned aside quickly out of the way 
which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and have sacrificed thereunto, and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people. Behold, it's a stiff-necked people. Now, therefore, let me alone. Moses, don't talk to me about this. Let me alone. Moses, I've decided to do something. These people, the ministry of the prophet brought them out of Egypt. Now they've gone astray. Now they've corrupted themselves and they've raised up a molting cow. I'm going to destroy them. They will not be preserved. We are preserved through the ministry of the prophet. Look at this. Let me alone that my cross may wax hot against them and that I may consume them. And I will make of thee a great nation. And Moses besought the Lord his God for their preservation. They should have been lost now for their preservation. They should have been destroyed now for their preservation. They should have been totally kind of crushed out now for their preservation. They should have been forgotten, forsaken totally by the Lord. But Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Here is the prophet, he wants them preserved. Here is the prophet, he wants them. The Lord used the prophet to bring them out of captivity. And the Lord is going to use the prophet again to preserve them in their freedom, their liberty. Verse 13, remember Abraham, Isaac and Israel, thy servants to whom thou swearest by thine own self and saidst unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. And all this land that has spoken of will I give unto your seed and they shall inherit them forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. And he did it not. They were preserved. It is through the ministry of the faithful prophet that declares the mind of God, that stands in between the people and God, that talks to the people about God and talks to God about the people that those people are brought out, that those people are preserved. Actually, the prophet also makes them special and unique and peculiar in the face of the Lord in their preservation. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, reading from verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 7. For what nation is there so great who has God so nigh, so near unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? It was the ministry of the prophet that brought them out, raised them up, cleansed their lives, gave them statutes and laws, and present them in a high position. And it says, what other nation is there so great who has God so near unto them? It's the ministry of the prophet that brought the Almighty God near unto the people. 
and it's the ministry of the prophet that assures them of answers to their prayers and he gives answers to all their prayers whatever they call him for and what nation in verse 8 is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which i the prophet said before you this day only take heed to thyself the prophet is the preacher is not preaching to them the prophet brings the mind of god the word of god unto the people and the prophet also makes sure he tells them abide by that word only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen and lest, the, lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life but teach them thy sons and thy sons sons that's the prophet let's look at first samuel chapter 12 the ministry of the prophet the faithful prophet the prophet is a teacher of the word of god look at first samuel chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 20 for samuel chapter 12 verse 20 and samuel said unto the people is samuel the prophet fear not ye have done all this wickedness ye turn not aside from, from following the lord counseling them the prophet counsels the prophet tells them i make your ways the prophet tells them you have turned aside turn back to the lord the prophet does the work of an evangelist repent the prophet does the work of a pastor he preaches unto them the prophet does the work of a teacher he teaches them and it says it turn not aside from following the lord uh, but serve the lord with all your heart and turn ye not aside for then should ye go after vain things which cannot profit nor deliver for they are vain for the lord will not forsake his people he gives them the promises of god as a prophet for his great name's sake because it has pleased the lord to make you his people look at verse 23 very important moreover as for me prophet samuel as for me the prophet of the lord as for me god forbid that i should sin against the lord in ceasing to pray for you the prophet prays for the people intercedes for the people but i prophet samuel I, the prophet, will teach you the good and the right way. That's the ministry of the prophet. I will teach you the good and the right way. Second Chronicles chapter 20. In Second Chronicles chapter 20, I'm reading from verse 12. Here King Jehoshaphat came before the Lord. He had a great problem. That would have wiped out that nation decimated that nation destroyed that nation but now remember the ministry of the prophet is for the preservation of the people look at verse 12 oh our god will thou not judge them for we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mathaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Here is a prophet now that is going to declare the word of God unto them. And he said, Hear ye, O Judah. 
and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord unto you. Here is the prophet, be not afraid, not, not dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. That's the word of a prophet. The, the battle is not yours. I said the battle is not yours. But God's. I didn't hear your amen. Many people are too involved with his problems. If they bring any puzzle to you and you say the puzzle is not yours, it belongs to so and so, it will be a sin. It will be an unfaithful act to take that puzzle and open it and look at what is inside there and possess that the puzzle is not yours. It belongs to another person. This warfare is not yours. This problem is not yours. It belongs to God, and God will solve that problem in Jesus' name. Verse 16, tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Zeus, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. That's, that's, a, that's a prophet showing us and telling us the way of salvation with Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed tomorrow. Go out against them. For the Lord will be with you. The prophet reminds us of the promises of God. There are many, there are many so-called prophets. They see it somewhere and they are saying this will happen. They don't tell us how to pray. This will happen. They don't tell us how to claim the promises of God. That will happen. They don't tell us how to be free from all the yoke and all the problem. They might tell us to fast 21 days. They might tell us to fast 14 days. They might tell us to fast 100 days. But they don't tell us how the promise will be ours. But the, pro the prophet of the Lord comes to tell us the Lord, the mighty warrior, will be with you. The Lord that never lost any battle will be with you. And Jehoshaphat in verse 18 bowed his edge with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. The prophet leads us to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We forget the problem. We don't think about the problem anymore. The prophet, the mouthpiece of God has spoken. He has said, you don't have any problem, only Satan has a problem. I said, you don't have any problem, only your enemy has a problem. I said, you don't have any, any problem, only the strangers of the grace of God have a problem. This morning I come to declare to you, you don't have any problem. Only the enemies have a problem. And the Lord himself will take this battle. He'll take it out of your hand in Jesus' name. Now you can worship the Lord with freedom. Now you can worship the Lord without any fear for any man. Verse 19, And the Levites and of the children of Kohathites and of the children of Kohites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. In verse 20, they arose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe 
the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. This morning as you have come, and God is on your side, and God is for you, and God is your heavenly Father, believe the Lord your God, you'll be established. Uh, look at this, look at this. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. I see somebody there prospering, progressing, I'm moving higher. I'm moving forward. The word of the Lord will break every yoke in your life in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 37. Isaiah chapter 37. I'm reading from verse 1. And it came to pass when King Ezekiah had it, he wrenched his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the Lord and he sent Eliakim who was over the household and Shebna, Shebna the scribe and the elders of the priest covered with sackcloth unto Isaiah tell me unto Isaiah tell me the prophet when there's a problem and the prophet is on ground, that prophet will link you to God. The son of Amos, and they said unto him, Thus saith Ezekiah, This day is a day of trouble, and of rebuke, and of blasphemy. For the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, and he said, The prophet said unto them, Thus shall ye say unto your master, Thus says the Lord, Thus says the Lord, Once the Lord has spoken, There should be no fear in your heart anymore. Once the Lord has spoken, You should count it done. Once the Lord has spoken, You know, it will be like you're almost walking on air. You'll be light. You'll fly over your mountain. You'll cross every river. And every challenge before you, every hurdle, you'll jump over in Jesus' name. New life has begun. New progress has become, has begun. And new possibilities in our lives in Jesus' name. He says, go and tell him, be not afraid of the words that thou hast heard. When we, the, the servants of the king of Assyria, as blasphemed me, behold, I will send a blast upon him. And he shall hear a rumor and shall return to his own land. And I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. That's all the amen my people can say. Verse 36, verse 36. Then the angel of the Lord went forth after the prophet has spoken. Any messenger that is necessary, human or divine, angels or men, the Lord will send them forth. So that every promise he has uttered in your life, like soaring high above limitation, the Lord will send angelic messengers, it will be fulfilled in your life. Then the angel of the Lord went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and four score and five thousand. One hundred and eighty-five thousand enemies smitten in one night. One hundred and eighty-five thousand. 
How many enemies do you have? Three. Ah, that one is small. Ten. That one is small. If God took care of 185,000 enemies well armed, and he said that Ezekiah will show him something, will destroy him, will, will level that nation that is governing. And the prophet said, Ezekiah, relax. Church, I said, relax. No fear, no anxiety, no worry. God has solution to every problem. And so one angel came and smote 185,000. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. How about the other one that was boasting? And the other one that says, tell Hezekiah that this is the king of Assyria. And when I get there with my people, I'll show you something. What happened to him? Verse 38, and it came to pass as he was worshipping in the house of Nisroch is God idol that Ahmad Adramelech and Sherezer his son smote him with the sword and they escaped into the land of Armenia and Ezahadon his son reigned in his stead. What are the people we are afraid of? What is the king we are afraid of? The one that said, we will not make progress. We will not cross the road. We will not live a happy life. They are all gone. I said, they are all gone. The ministry of the faithful prophet showing us the way of the Lord. Faithful prophets are righteous. They are truthful. The spirit controls and they are fearless and faithful as they represent the almighty God. They know God experientially. They know God face to face. They know and they speak the word of God without any shadow of doubt. They call men to repentance. They call the backsliding to restoration. And they call God's people to righteousness. And miracles done by those uh, prophets of God, they are made to draw us nearer and nearer unto God. One prophet can have uh, the solution to the problem of thousands and thousands of people. Look at uh, 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. I said one prophet can have... Uh, the solution to the problem of thousands and thousands and thousands of people. In 1 Kings chapter 18, I'm reading to you from verse 36. From verse 36, it says, And it came to pass at the, at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah, who is this? Elijah, I said, who is this? The prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me that these people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their hearts back again. That's the ministry of the prophet. Turn their hearts back again. Back to God. Back to righteousness. Back to the will of God. Then the fire of the Lord fell. The fire will fall will burn out all the chains in your life in Jesus' name. The fire will fall and 
born out all the fetters and all the yokes and everything that binds you in Jesus name the fire will fall and burn off all the cells of cancer in your body in Jesus name everything that ties you everything that holds you down everything that hinders your way every block and everything that is making you to stand still that you cannot move forward the fire of the Lord will fall and burn off everything in Jesus name then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that is in the trench and when all the people saw it all the people saw it all the people will see something all the people will see miracle all the people will see the power of God in our lives in Jesus name they fell on their faces and they said the Lord he is the God the Lord he is the God one single prophet can bring thousands of people to face the Lord and surrender to the Lord but there are false prophets and those false prophets they do not benefit us why will somebody go for something false when the true is available look at second peter the peril of perversion by the false prophets the peril of perversion by the false prophet, Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1. And there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Here is an apostle, and is now ministering like a prophet himself. As an apostle and as a teacher, he went to the scriptures. In the past, there were false prophets among the people. But now, as a prophet, he declares what will come. And he says, even as there shall be false teachers among you, and what will they do who privately, privately, shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, bought them, there's some people they were saved but they they were redeemed but they they were taken out of sin and they professed to have been purchased by the blood of the lamb the lord that bought them and now they backslid and after that backsliding they are denying the lord that bought them and they'll bring upon themselves swift destruction and many shall follow the pernicious ways but i will not follow i said i will not follow false prophet it says many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of and through covetousness shall they with faint words make merchandise of of uh, you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not there are false prophets false prophets are deceptive false prophets are destructive false prophets are dangerous false prophets are deadly and don't think that those false prophets don't know how to talk they know how to talk otherwise if they don't know how to talk how will they convince anybody actually when those deceptive destructive dangerous deadly prophets when they speak they persuade many the more persuasive they are the more perilous they are because now with the gift of communication they're able to bring wash 
they're able to deceive the people who do not know the truth and the more persuasive they are the more perilous they are the more subtle they are the more sub subversive they are they are subtle they are clever they are tactful and the more subtle they are the more subversive they will be the more religious they are the more ruinous they will be they talk in a sanctimonious way they look meek and they look gentle and they look spiritual and because of that they become so ruinous the more religious they are the more ruinous they will be the more humble they are the more harmful they are when they come and they humble themselves i'm your servant i came to serve you i have your good at mind in mind i don't, I don't care for myself whatever happens for, to me who am i i'm a village boy I came for a background, nobody should even know me. And when you hear them humble like that, you forget yourself. The more humble they are, the more harmful they become. The more mysterious they are. And they tell these stories, when they went into the sky, and when they didn't know where they were, and they had voices, they couldn't identify the voice until the Lord said, I am the Lord, my servant, I'm talking to you. And they look mysterious. And the more mysterious they, they talk, the more mischievous they become. They are sucked in. Many people are sucked in into such a thing. But sometimes they're very pushful and they demand, you must do as I say. If you don't do as I say, I told so and so to give me this. He didn't give me, he lost that money. I told so and so to give me his car. He didn't give me the car. He had accident and they could not repair the car at all. He regretted. I told somebody to give me his salary and he didn't do that. He lost the job. And the more pushful they are, the more possessive they become they want to possess your soul they want to possess your family and the more deceptive they are the more damning they will be that's why the lord has warned us and has said beware of false prophets they will not deceive you they will not come to your house you will not give them the key to your heart I said you will not give them the key to your heart. They will not snatch your wife away. They will not take your children away. They will not deceive your husband in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 9. My heart within me is broken. Because of the prophets, all my bones shake. I am like a drunken man, and like a man whom wine has overcome. Because of the Lord, because of the word of his holiness. Verse 11. For both prophets and priests are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness says the Lord verse 13 and I have seen fully in the prophets of Samaria they prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err that's their purpose that's their plot that's their goal they want the people of God to go astray verse 14 I've seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and they walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers. 
that none does return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Verse 17. They say still to them that despise me, the Lord said, Ye shall have peace. They tell people who are stealing. They tell people who are doing evil. We are praying for you. The Lord will protect you. Go in peace and come back in peace. And they tell sinners that. They say there is no problem. God is a God of love. They say ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, I have not sent these prophets. I didn't give them any word. I didn't give them any revelation. Yet they ran. I have not spoken unto them. Yet they prophesied. And those who are hungry for prophecy and are going here and there, they'll manufacture false prophecy for you. And it is to make you afraid and pack all your load away from where you are hearing sound doctrine and come to them and totally become their slave. They will not enslave you in Jesus' name. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken unto them, yet they prophesy. Verse 26, in verse 26, How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? You don't know it's lie, but God knows it's a lie. Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. The prophet of the deceit of their own heart which seem to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams which they tell every man to his neighbor as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal these false prophets their followers only remember their names they'll say so and so said so and so said they have, they have turned their minds away from the Bible. They cannot say the word of God said. They cannot say this chapter and this verse of the Bible said their authority and their backbone is so and so, prophet so and so, or preacher so and so. The Lord said it's against all those people. If God is against them, why are you running after them? Lamentation chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 14. Lamentation chapter 2. Reading from verse 14. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. And they have not discovered thine iniquity. They have stopped talking about sin, about repentance. In many of those uh, New Age churches, in many of those Pentecostal charismatic churches, they stop talking about iniquity, about sin. And they just tell all the people, everything is all right. No, everything is not all right. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. In verse 14, thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. And they have not discovered thine iniquity to turn away thy captivity. But they have seen for thee false bodies and causes of banishment. You are not listening to them. Ezekiel chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 10 and verse 11. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 10. And, it, and they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. 
the punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him. The punishment of the prophet shall be unto all those prophets and the people that are following after those prophets. Whether you follow them directly, you go to them, or you follow them on the internet, or you follow them by exchange of email, or you follow them in any way, the punishment that comes to the false prophets will come to the one that has been deceived by the false prophet. In verse 11, that the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted any more with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people, and I may be their God, says the Lord God. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 7. The Lord Jesus Christ warned every one of us. In Matthew chapter 7, reading from verse 15, Beware of false prophets. Beware of false prophets. Beware. Be aware of them, be weary of them, and withdraw yourself from them. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You will not go to them, you will not be sucked in where the deceptive subtle uh, prophecies in jesus name romans chapter 16 romans chapter 16 we're reading from verse 17 now i beseech your brethren mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned Tell me the rest and avoid them, avoid them, avoid them. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 27. Proverbs 19, reading from verse 27. Cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causes to err from the words of knowledge from the words of knowledge the knowledge of salvation you have that already the word of holiness knowledge of, of holiness you have that already and knowledge of sound doctrine and then a false prophet is coming and he's saying thus says the lord and when you examine it the whole thing is empty there's no righteousness there there's no purity there You'll not be their friend. See, stop, my son, to hear the instruction that causes thee to go astray, to err from the words of knowledge. But we'll not run after them. John chapter 10, here's what Jesus said. John chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 5. A stranger will they not follow. A false prophet is a stranger. A stranger to the kingdom of God. A stranger to the gospel of grace. A stranger to the message of holiness. A stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. Avoid them. Beware of them. Cease from hearing them, flee from them. For they know not the voice of the stranger. When they come to you, you will not open the door to them. Second John, I'm reading from verse 10. Second John, verse 10. If there come any, whatever his title, if there come any, whatever is background, 
if there come any whatever is disposition if there come any whatever is smile if there come any whatever is pretended testimony if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine receive him not into your house you'll not receive them i said you'll not receive them you will not accommodate them they will not make your house the center from where they send out their false doctrine in jesus name if they come any unto you and bring not this doctrine receive him not into your house neither bid him godspeed neither say save journey neither say have courage neither say although i'm not with you i'm praying for you neither say although i cannot be physically there I contribute my quarter to help you have progress. Neither bid him God's speed. For he that bideth him God's speed is a partaker of his evil deeds. You will not be a partaker of evil. <laughs> Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. I read from verse 10. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers especially they of the circumcision whose mouth must be stopped if they happen to be in your local church and you cannot stop them report to the leader who is over them who can stop them if they're preaching false doctrine if they become false prophets in the midst of a church where we teach the Bible clearly and faithfully, you stop them whose mouth must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy locusts sake for the love of money. It goes on to say in verse 13, this is true this witness is true wherefore rebuke them sharply don't have any secret love secret admiration and secret acceptance for them rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith will not be partakers of their evil in jesus name I will not be a partaker of their evil. I will not support false prophets. But, but to preach the gospel to every creature, if they open the door in the prison, we go to the prison to preach. If they open the door in the hospital, we go to the hospital to preach. If they open the door in any assembly, we go to preach the word of God. Preaching to somebody is not like you agree with him. And giving food to the hungry is not like you want to be as hungry as he is. You have the food and he is hungry and you give to them. As for ministering, we'll minister to everybody. But we will not accept anybody's false doctrine. I said you will not accept anybody's false doctrine. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 13. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their words beware of false prophets take heed to yourself hold fast 
the word of God. Point number three now, the perfection of prophecy by the final prophet. The perfection of prophecy by the final prophet. Deuteronomy chapter 18. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18, reading from verse 18. Look at what it says. I, this is the Almighty God talking to Moses. I will raise them up, a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, faithful like unto thee, not turning to the right or turning to the left, like unto thee, fearlessly speaking the word, like unto thee, I will raise them up, a prophet, capital P, from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Anyone that will not hear that final prophet, I will require it of him. Verse 15 of that same chapter, the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet, capital P, referring to Jesus who was yet to come at that time, a prophet from the midst of thee and of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him. He shall hack it. You can't forget what any other person is saying, but unto Christ thou shalt hack him. How do we know that is referring to Christ? How do we know that is referring to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, verse 22. In Acts chapter 3, verse 22, for Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me, quoting exactly that same prophecy. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. He's the one that talks about repentance. Hear him. He talks about his blood cleansing us, given as ransom for our sins. Hear him. He talks of salvation. And there's no other name whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus. Hear him. He is our sanctifier. And the one that sanctifies and those who are sanctified, they are all of one. Hear him. He is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. He shall receive power. Not many days says, hear ye him. The Lord, the Almighty God has put his word in his mouth. Hear him whatsoever he shall say. Verse 23, and it shall come to pass that every soul which shall not hear that prophet, the Lord Jesus Christ, shall be destroyed from among the people. Verse 26, unto you first, God having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquity. Well, we'll hear Jesus. I will hear him. Luke chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 24. Luke chapter 24, verse 44. And he said unto them, Here is Christ, the risen Lord, talking to his disciples. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me Moses spoke about him concerning me the other prophets Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel 
Osea to Malachi, they spoke about him concerning me. In the Psalms, David and the Psalmist spoke about him concerning me. Verse 45, then upon he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. He is that final prophet. As you hear him, you'll be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen is dying down. You'll be healed in Jesus' name. And all the promises of God will be yes and amen in your life. In John chapter 7. John chapter 7, verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me. Anyone there? He that believeth on me. I said, anyone there? As the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. They speak he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Look at verse 40. Many of the people therefore, when they heard this saying, said, Of a truth, this is the prophet. Capital P. The prophet. Capital P is the one. I believe in him. I said, I believe in him is the final voice from the Almighty God. John chapter 8, verse 24. John chapter 8, verse 24. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, I am the one the scripture spoke about as the final representative of the Almighty God. If you do not believe I am he, he the prophet, final, he the high priest, final high priest, he the king of kings. If you do not believe that I am he, he the savior, he the sanctifier, he the baptizer in the Holy Ghost, he the deliverer, he the redeemer. He the final voice from heaven. If you do not believe that I am he, he shall die in your sins. Lord, I believe. As you believe, the blessings of God from heaven will flow into your life in Jesus' name. Verse 28 of that same chapter, then said Jesus unto them, when ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am He. He had said, if you do not believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. And then He said, when I am lifted up, and I am hanging on that cross, and I die for the sins of the world, I am buried. And the third day I rise again with the mighty power of God. Then will you know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. And He that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I do always, the final prophet. I say always, I do always those things that please him. Now, blessings are available. Now, deliverance is available. Now, salvation is available. 
now all the blessings that you desire they are now available solution to every problem is now available i believe i believe i believe jesus is the christ i believe jesus is the son of god i believe jesus is the redeemer i believe jesus is the solution to every problem of my life amen but start you too and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free all fetters broken all yokes broken all works of the devil destroyed salvation available to everyone and deliverance liberation available to everyone now we know the truth we abandon we forsake all the false prophets ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free verse 36 if the son therefore shall make you free ye shall be free indeed i'm looking at somebody who is free delivered totally ransomed by the lord i'm looking at someone all your chains are broken and all the yoke of the devil is destroyed in jesus name it'll set you free i said it'll set you free i said it'll set you free now that jesus christ has come and he is the final word and he is the revealer of the final will of god and we accept him and we believe him everything we desire will be done in jesus name hebrews chapter one hebrews chapter one verse one god what sundry times and in diverse manners speak in time past unto the fathers by the prophets in the plural has in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things is no more speaking by those old 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 covenant prophets is now speaking unto us by his son whom he has appointed here of all things by whom also he made the walls who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person upholding all things by the word of his power he will uphold you i said he will uphold you upholding everyone and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of majesty on high he's finished the work he sat down he's accomplished everything he sat down he has provided your salvation now he's sitting down he has provided for your healing now he's sitting down he has provided solution to every problem of your life now he's sitting down and you will now stand up after standing up the blessings will be showered into your life and you will sit down together with him in high places in christ jesus i see those who are set free where are they I said, where are they? I said, those whose yokes are broken, where are they? I see the people that Jesus Christ said, because you believe I am he. Solution has come to every problem of your life. Abandon the false prophets. Abandon those deceptive prophets. Abandon those destructive prophets. Abandon all those evil, all those people that are speaking out of the evil imagination of their heart. And look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. All problems are solved this morning. 
rise up and talk to the Lord. Lord, I believe. Lord, I accept. Lord, I recognize that you are the final voice coming from God. No other voice, no other prophet. Don't allow deceivers to come near your house to deceive you, to destroy you. The Father has spoken the final word. Jesus is the final word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld this glory, the glory as of the only begotten of God, full of grace and full of truth, and is full of glory. Talk to him this morning. Rejoice that now we have had the final prophet, the final voice, the final word. Christ has spoken. Let the rest of the world be quiet before him. Christ has spoken. Let the false prophets keep quiet. Christ has spoken. Let all those strangers, let them keep quiet. Is the Savior the Savior has spoken. There's no other Savior anywhere. Is the sanctifier. The sanctifier has spoken. No other sanctifier. Any other place. The baptizer. The Holy Ghost has spoken. There's no other baptizer from any other place. The healer has spoken. By stripes who are healed. No other healing virtue from any other person. Christ is the final word. Christ is the final representative of God. Christ is the final solution to every problem of your life. Accept Him. Believe Him. Embrace Him. Hold on to Him. He is Savior. He is Lord. He is the Prince of Peace. He is that final prophet to come. Faithful, honest, dependable, and is willing and ready to work wonders in your life. Except you believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. Anyone who does not believe that Christ is he the savior the lord the redeemer he will die in his sins but as you believe that he died on the cross he rose again for your justification and you hold on to him with all your heart all your soul and all your mind I believe that he is whom the father said he is this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased hear ye him I believe Jesus is who God says he is the son of God the savior of the world the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. I believe. He is my sanctifier. I believe. He purifies the heart. I believe. He makes clean everyone that is unclean. I believe. He is the one that brings me to God, reconciles me to God, I believe is the bridge between sinful man and a holy God. I believe through him you are reconciled with God. Accept him, receive him, believe him. The faithful prophets of the Old Testament spoke about him of Christ. They said it's coming. They even spoke on how he will die on the cross when he comes. 
they revealed even the words he was say on the cross believe me and they remind us that the heavenly father has laid on him the iniquity of us all the lord the father has laid your iniquity on him thank him for that he is your substitute he takes your sins away takes your iniquity away takes your guilt away and he removes the punishment that you should upon believing except you believe that i am he you will die in your sin he is your sanctifier he purifies he cleanses he makes holy he sanctifies believe as you believe he cleanses your heart he gives you a new heart believe as you believe the blessing of salvation is yours as you believe the blessing of sanctification is yours he said i will pray the father and he will send the holy ghost to you that he may abide with you forever he shall receive power after the holy ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and judea and samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth he baptizes with the holy ghost and with fire and the fire will burn off every chaff in your life believe that i am he he died for you on the cross he bore your shame he bore your sorrow he bore all your problems he took weakness away from your life believe when i'm raised up you will believe that i am he he is the one is your healer by his stripes you are healed the name of the sickness does not matter all power is given unto him on earth and in heaven and whatever we ask in that name in the name of jesus the father gives unto us no incurable disease can stand before his name believe i believe he is my healer i believe he is my liberator i believe he is emmanuel with us my emancipator i believe he is and is the one to take away and break and destroy every yoke in your life believe for this purpose the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil believe that he is the one that has come to destroy the works of the devil in your life believe and it will be unto you according to your faith savior yes lord i believe sanctifier yes lord i believe baptize and the holy ghost yes lord i believe yoke breaker yes lord i believe healer yes lord i believe 
deliverer yes lord i believe believe that he is believe that he is believe what your heart confess what your mouth he is he is for the father says he is he is who he says he is he is who the bible reveals he is believe that and you are free he sets you free if the son therefore shall make you free he shall be free indeed you have heard the truth believe the truth you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free I am free. I am free. From every chain, you are free. From every sin, you are free. From every sickness, you are free. From every bondage, you are free. From every satanic attack, you are free. From old age sicknesses, you are free. From the curse of the law, you are free. From every sin, from every bondage, from every harassment, from every attack, from every affliction, you brought here this morning. I am free. You are free in Jesus' name. That sin will not continue in your life. Depravity will not continue in your life. Incurable disease will not continue in your life. Yokes will not continue in your life. You're free. What are you? You're free. Say it, I am free. I will not die, I am free. I will not die. I am free. I will not perish. I am free. You will not perish in Jesus' name. You accept? You accept? You believe? You know it is done? Raise up that time, Father, in Jesus' name. We have heard from you. You've shown us the ministry of faithful prophets. And you have shown us the mischievous acts of false prophets. Lord, individually and corporately, we forsake everything false in Jesus' name. Now we accept that Jesus is the final prophet, perfect prophet, heavenly saint prophet, and the one that is the solution to every problem. Every one of us corporately, we believe in Jesus' name. All the sinners who believe in Jesus this morning, give your salvation to them. Forgive their sin. Confirm that forgiveness. Let your spirit bear witness in their hearts. They are now children of God. All those who are backsliding for one thing or the other, they've gone to the far country. Lord, I pray, restore everyone this morning in Jesus' name. The things they were looking for that made them to go astray, 
I pray, Lord, all your blessings as they come back home to the kingdom, give unto them in Jesus' name. All your children were praying, you'll give them a divine nature. Take away the depravity of their hearts. Sanctify every believer. Lord, sanctify every believer. And purify, sanctify, make holy every heart in Jesus' name. Lord, your people need power. In a community, they need power. So that all these uh, powerless powers will not be intimidating them and frightening them. Lord, I pray the spirit of fear come out in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray the baptism in the Holy Ghost, the power of the Spirit of God, bring upon sanctified vessels in Jesus' name. Lord, your word says, as you are, so we are in this world. You are not sick. We will not be sick. You are not weak. We will not be weak. You bore the stripes for all our sicknesses. And therefore, Lord, I pray, every sickness represented here. I pray, take it away in Jesus' name. Every affliction, Lord, I pray, take it away in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, there'll be a miracle for everyone. We believe that you are who God says you are. And so we accept the solution to every problem. My sister, you're free. My daughter, there, you're free. My boy, there, you're free. My brother, you're free. Confirm your miracle upon every life. Dry bones rise up. Dim eyes brighten up. With that hands be strong in Jesus' name. Let the weak say, You are strong in Jesus' name. Those who are jobless, the Lord provide for you in Jesus' name. This beginning of a new month, the month of soaring above limitation. All the limitations of your life be cancelled in Jesus' name. Every brother and every sister, every boy and every girl, every father, every mother, every minister, every worker, every member, every invitee, go home with the blessings of God. You are free. I am free. I am free. I am free. It is confirmed in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Don't go yet. Praise the Lord. This week, I got a testimony from somewhere. And I'm giving you the testimony because they, something has happened in your life already. They were having a conference, deeper life conference, far, far, far away. I should have been there. But this time, I said, the walk over here at the headquarters is, you know, keeping me here. And you should please excuse me this time. And they accepted and then they said, okay, since you'll not be here physically, we'll play some of the messages you are, you know, 
done already. And there was one of the messages they played. And while the message was going on, somebody had a person, a woman on a wheelchair, legs paralyzed, fingers could not move. And the message came on. And after the message, the prayer after the message, they were closing their eyes like we do while prayer was going on. As they opened their eyes like this, that woman on the wheelchair got up. All the fingers that were that was cheap, everything was loosened. And then the following time, when they when they went for break, they went out for break. And then as they were coming back, the woman came back walking like every other person. Totally free, totally free, totally free. And the wheelchair was empty. Your wheelchair is empty. If that could happen where I wasn't present physically, but the power had been recorded, recorded here from Lagos, and then the transmission, they held those things and put that DVD there with DVD power went forth this one is not dvd today 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 go back home with your miracle you are delivered i am delivered i said i i i i am delivered I am delivered. Praise the Lord. I am delivered. <laughs>